Hi guys and thanks for joining. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a custom archive design where each post will be represented by this cool style that I created from some HTML and CSS. So first step as always you need to create your HTML and CSS and we can jump right in and start creating our widget that we will use uh, later on for creating the archive page. So in WordPress, we need unlimited elements installed and we're going to create a custom widget. So click add widget and we need to give the widget a name. I'm going to call this one um, post tile or let's call it fancy post post tile. This will be available in our catalog and once I'm done I'm going to upload it and anyone can download and use it from the catalog. Perfect, add widget, double click and over here we can select an icon. This icon will be and the icon that we see in WordPress in the side, man, side panel of the widgets. So I'm just going to select one of these. Next thing is adding HTML and CSS. So we're going to copy the HTML and copy the CSS. Perfect. And the next thing is to add an attribute. So I'm going to add attributes and I'm going to select over here post list since that's what's used for archive pages. I'm going to give that a title and a name. And we can select uh, one of our posts just for testing purposes. You don't have to do this step. And that's it. Let's add that and go back into the HTML. Now, this part is new. It didn't it wasn't open before and it opened only once we created a post list. This is the repeater part. And over here we want to put the part that will repeat itself depending on how many posts this archive page is going to show. So over here I'm just going to take the HTML of the item itself. Instead, I will replace that with put items tag, which is actually the repeater, which tells us to repeat this part. And over here is the tile that we want to be repeated depending on how many posts there are. So we need to change these static uh, labels into dynamic ones. The first thing we're going to change is the image. Let's select that. And on the right side over here, we have item post list. I'm going to click on that and it shows us all the available fields for posts. As you can see, item post image, I'm going to replace that by clicking and it replaced it over here. Perfect. In post day, I'm going to leave day and month for the end because it's a bit more complicated. Let's do the title. Perfect. Let's do the text. We can use intro or content. We are going to want only the intro text. And we can link this up by using post link. Perfect. So we've done that. We finished that part. And now we have the date. What's nice about the widget creator from Unlimited Elements is that you can format your dates however you want. As you can see, I sort of broke it up into two fields. You can see that in the design over here, which makes it a bit more special. And we're going to want to use on the right side, we have post date. I'm going to click on that. And what it does, it suggests one of the formats that you can use, but we're going to want to edit this format. I'm going to paste that in both these places. And this is not the format I'm going to want. We're going to change this. The part you can change is this one. 
How do you know how to change that? I'm going to post a link to the PHP date manual. And over here we have all the format types that we can use. So for day, I'm going to use this D, only this D, which will display a day of the month in two digits. So 0, 1, 15, stuff like that. So let's use that for the day. Over here we're in post day. We're going to put only the D. And we need to find something for the month that will show the month uh, as a text. So I'm going down to month. And we don't want a numeric representation. representation. We want a textual representation. So we're going to take this F and replace all of this with that F. Oh, oops, big F. Perfect. I think we have changed all the fields to dynamic fields and now it's time to test this. So I'm going to click update. In templates, we're going into theme builder. We're going to do an archive page. Let's add a new one. I'm going to call it fancy archive. Over here, Elementor suggests us for some of their predefined layouts. We're not going to use any of those, so close that. And let's search for the word fancy. We can see our icon in the name of the widget we created. Let's drag that inside. And perfect, it's working. That looks awesome. Now, we don't have a... First of all, if you want to filter this somehow, you can choose uh, cust uh, custom posts, okay? And what I want to do is I want to add some options since we don't have any options here. And the options we're going to use real quickly just to show how it works is the color of the background of this label, the text of the read more button, and maybe the height of each tile and let's do also the gap between them okay though so we're going to add four attributes so let's go into edit widget HTML and the first part is adding the attributes so I'm going to click add attribute and let's call the first one gap we'll set the default to zero we can change this to a number field sorry let's change that again none add attribute perfect we've added the first one let's do link text this is going to be a text field the default will be read more let's add the one for the color add a default value the default value is used for the first time the widget is added to the page. So we said gap, link, date, and the height of the title. This will be a number as well. Let's make the default 450. Perfect going back into the HTML and I'm going to replace this static read more to a dynamic field. Now we've added main attributes, not item attributes. So I'm going to click main and we can see the attributes that we added and the attribute that I used was link text. I replaced that. Perfect. Let's go into CSS and change the other stuff. So for gap, you're going to change this 40 to the gap. The max width we can take off. We don't need that. And min height, minimum height. So we can change that to the tile height. So the user can change that. For the date, we're going to take off this red background and make it a colored one that a the user can change 
and I think we used all of them. So we used gap, link text, color BG, and tile height. Perfect. Update. And we're going back into our archive page. We don't see the attributes we added yet. Let's click publish to save. And I'm going to click refresh to see the new attributes we've added. I'm going to click on it. And now we can edit our new archive page that we created. So let's change the read more to learn more. We can change the tile height to 350 instead. If that was too high for us, we can change the gap between them to 50 pixels if we want to make some gap. Perfect. And we can change the color background of our date. Very, very cool. Very, very easy. If you have, if you, it's too technical for you and you don't know how to do this, um, you can hire a developer. It's going to be very easy for him to implement. Uh, or you can ask us to add your uh, unique skins that you found out to be cool. Um, this took me all together. The tutorial took me maybe, I don't know, less than 10 minutes and creating the HTML took me less than 10 minutes as well. So it's very fast and easy, and that's the whole idea behind Unlimited Elements. I want to thank you guys for joining. Please subscribe for more, and see you next time.